Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Ty Green, and I pray that this review of this peace plan will glorify God and edify his people. As we look into this even more, we can see that in many ways that our observation of this is lining up with scripture, which gives us encouragement in our blessed hope, Jesus Christ, and his soon coming appearing. As a result, we glorify our God in heaven. In this last look into this proposed peace plan is what I believe is a hint to the third temple. And as we saw in the last presentation, there is an effort within this peace plan proposal to resolve the conflict with the mosque on the Temple Mount. American interest in the Middle East used to be about having a supply of, of, uh, of, of fuel, right? Now, the American interest there is purely to stop radicalization. And the biggest element today that caused radicalization is the conflict with the Palestinians and the conflict with the mosque. And so if we can get some resolution on this issue, and what we've done today is a major step, right? Because we've given them an offer where for the first time, the, 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 the whole entire Islamic world can say the mosque is safe, and any Muslim who wants to come to pray is welcome, right? We've also been in a place where we said, if the Palestinians want a state and they want uh, to thrive, they now have an offer on the table. As we have seen before, the Sanhedrin have stated that the hierarchy within Islam have supported the building of the third temple. Everybody will prosper because this is what this temple is for, <laughs> for the whole world. So you think that there could be some union between all the religions as Absolutely. part of Absolutely. We already have union, unity, but everybody's afraid from the terrorists. So this is our job to unify everybody to worship the only true living God uh, in the third temple with all the nations, all the nations that will worship God. Many, many um, Muslims, I'm talking about the high, um, uh, let's say, uh, rank or hierarchy, and the Muslim uh, religious came to us and asked us, please build a temple. Why? Because the temple is for everybody, is for the whole nations to prosper and thrive. So they came to us and asked, please build the temple. Now, the problem is with the radicals. The new world um, without any, let's say, negative and forbidden feelings like hatred, like uh, revenge, like it will be only loving, appreciation, uh, honoring. So this will be a, a new world, but not all order. It will be a new world, uh, holistic, uh, the holistic way, the, the way God wants it. It appears that at the higher levels, the third temple is welcomed. So let's see the hint to it within the peace plan proposal. Let's pick it up on page 16 under the Jerusalem's Holy Sites section. We find this. Unlike many previous powers that had ruled Jerusalem and had destroyed the holy sites of other faiths, the state of Israel is to be commended for safeguarding the religious rights of all and maintaining a religious status quo. Given this commendable record for more than half a century, as well as the extreme sensitivity regarding some of Jerusalem's holy sites, we believe that this practice should remain and that all of Jerusalem's holy sites should be subject to the same governance regimes that exist today. In particular, the status quo at the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, should continue uninterrupted. Jerusalem's holy sites should remain open and available for peaceful worshipers and tourists of all faiths. Now listen to this part real close. People of every faith should be permitted to pray on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, in a manner that is fully respectful to their religion taking into account the times of each religion's prayers and holidays, as well as other religious factors. A mutual respect for all religions. People of every faith should be permitted to pray on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, in a manner that is fully respectable to their religion. See, right now, only Muslims can pray on the Temple Mount, the Haram al-Sharif is what they call it. 
So if one can pray, then the other should be allowed to pray too. One has a mosque, then the other should be able to have a temple. Oh, but there's more. Take a look at this on page 15 of the peace plan in the religious aspects of the Jerusalem issue section. Now I'm going to read the entire paragraph in which there is mention of the first temple, the second temple, and what I believe is a hint to the third temple, which is the focus point of this presentation. All right, here we go. Page 15 of the peace plan in the religious aspects of the Jerusalem issue. We understand that theological interpretations differ within each religion. The descriptions below of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are not intended to be definitive theological interpretations. It is nevertheless clear that each of these three great faiths has its own connection to Jerusalem. For Judaism, Jerusalem is where Mount Moriah is located. According to Jewish tradition, it is there that Abraham nearly sacrificed his son Isaac until God intervened. Centuries later, Jerusalem became the political center of the Jewish people when King David united the 12 tribes of Israel, making the city the capital and spiritual center of the Jewish people which it has remained for nearly 3,000 years. King David's son, King Solomon, built the, here we go, first temple on Mount Moriah. According to Jewish tradition, inside the temple within the Holy of Holies were stored the original Ten Commandments, revealed by God to Moses at Mount Sinai. The first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC. The second temple was built atop the same mountain and stood until it was destroyed by the Romans. And we know this one, guys, in 70 AD, right? However, Jerusalem never lost its holiness to the Jewish people. It remains the direction to which Jews throughout the world turn in prayer and the destination of Jewish pilgrimage every year on the ninth of the Jewish month of Av. Jews fast, mourn, and commemorate the destruction of the two temples. Although Jews pray today at the Western Wall, which is a retaining wall of the second temple, the Temple Mount itself is the holiest site in Judaism. There are nearly 700 separate references to Jerusalem in the Hebrew Bible. For 100 generations, the hopes and dreams of the Jewish people have been encapsulated by the words, quote unquote, next year in Jerusalem. Now, all of that was right there in the plan. And there it is, the hint to the third temple in that quote, next year in Jerusalem. We read on page 16 of this proposal that access for people of every faith would be allowed to pray on the Temple Mount. But next year in Jerusalem, for some Jewish people, is both a reminder of the first and second temples and a longing for the third. Look at this. In the MyJewishLearning.com, the most Straightforward answer is that Jerusalem refers to the future city and its temple rebuilt when the Messiah comes. Most traditional Jews feel quite comfortable expressing this messianic longing at the end of the Seder. Just as at the end of each Shabbat, Jews recite the hope that the Messiah should come speedily in our day. And to clarify, for some Israelis, some traditional Haggadot indicate that those in the Jerusalem state should replace the phrase with next year in Jerusalem, the rebuilt, implying a rebuilt temple. And look at this last piece, uh, a section from the Jerusalem Post article entitled Diaspora Next Year in Jerusalem. This little part here says, now at our Seder, my family no longer has to say, next year in Jerusalem, for we are already here. We replace it with 
next year in Jerusalem, the rebuilt, looking forward to the coming of the Messiah and a rebuilt temple. The hint is there as an expression of the desire to build the temple. It appears that Muslims will be allowed to continue to pray at the mosque on the mount. I believe that expectation through this proposal is that the Jews will be allowed to pray on the temple mount in the third temple as each group is expected to be fully respectful to each other. Once again, it all goes back to if one can pray there at the mosque, then the other can pray there at the temple. With mostly both the same interests and what will be the end of times, God will, be, will decide. We don't know what will be, if there will be an earthquake, if there will be a war, but we have to prepare ourselves, prepare in the most short time that we have to make this uh, operation. And therefore, it's like an army operation. We have to calculate each second. Do you think it's, it's soon? What? Do you think it's getting closer? You feel uh, an urgency? It can be. We don't know what will be. Maybe, maybe the government or the Arabs or someone else will, will throw us out. Maybe the government or the Arabs will call us, do it as quickly as you can because you will save us. Like in Egypt and Paro, that is say to Israel, go out from Egypt as quickly as you can. Build the temple as quickly as you can because there is a plague and you can save the, to cure the people. And there is a plague and a need to cure the people. Our plague is sin. And the cure for all of the people is Jesus Christ. Instead of acknowledging this, they want to resort to the temple sacrifices for the remission of sins. And they want to install an international law, the Noahide laws, for the non-Jewish population. So how we know what will be? We are just preparing ourselves very, very seriously uh, in each Second, everyone must know what he's doing. And we all need to ask ourselves, are we preparing ourselves very seriously? We have the word of God through scripture telling us what is about to happen. If you have accepted the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, draw closer to him. If you don't know Jesus Christ, and if you have not had your sins pardoned, through Christ, stand by. There's an upcoming encouragement for you at the end of this presentation. I hope that some of you that were not aware of what we covered within this time together can see that there is a serious effort going forth to allow for the building of the third temple. And we did see a hint to it within the peace plan proposal. And we see a prophetic evidence of it standing within Daniel 9:27 as the daily sacrifices have resumed, but then are ceased. And we see it right here in Daniel 9, 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Has to be a temple there, right? And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And in Daniel 11 and 31, we see the daily sacrifices taken away. In Daniel 11, 31, it says, and arms shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. So when those daily sacrifices resume, the third temple will be standing. And this is the same one instance that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, 15 through 16, where it says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. We also see in Daniel 12, 11, at the point where the daily sacrifices are taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up. 
And there is a countdown with a day count to the end of days. In Daniel 12, 11, it says, and from the time that the daily sacrifices shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate is set up. There should be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred five and thirty days. But go thou thy way. Till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. So we're watching this unfold just like the word of the Lord has told us through scripture. Piece by piece, it is surely coming together. So until our part is over, please continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ as our time to do so is very short. So let's keep on keeping on for the Lord. Be encouraged in Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen.